Hi guys, in today's video, we're gonna cover good bugs gone bad. Why would probiotics cause discomfort or symptoms or side effects? They're supposed to be good for you, right? Well, stay tuned to find out. There's a few reasons why you might not tolerate your probiotics. Okay, so there's a few reasons why you could have side effects or wonky symptoms from your probiotics. And as always, I'm gonna draw it out for you so we can really understand this and take a deep dive. So as I've drawn here, we have the human digestive system in a nutshell. Food comes in the mouth, goes down the esophagus, Stomach is the dilated portion, small intestine, and then finally gets to the colon before you poop it out. And when you take a probiotic, it's going to follow the same route. So your probiotic comes in and down the hatch it goes. When a probiotic comes into the gut, it's going to meet a couple of different things. In my opinion, the reason why probiotics cause symptoms 90% of the time, if not more, has nothing to do with your microbiome intrinsically in and of itself it's because of your immune system. Keep in mind that your immune system hangs out all around your gut, just waiting for shit to get weird, pun intended. And you can think there's about 70 or 80% of your immune system cells live all around the gut lining, like so. And they're gonna be speckled all throughout. This is 70% of your dang immune system. The heck with your lymph nodes, the heck with your bone marrow. 70% of the entire system lives in and around the gut, just patrolling and looking for things to get weird or change. And that's the key. Change is going to be relevant to your immune system because change oftentimes is not a good thing. And what happens is this probiotic comes in, sorry, it's confusing, I drew both with pink, oh well. The probiotic comes in, down the hatch, lands somewhere along the tube where it then gets the chance to meet one of your immune system cells. And here's the thing, guys. We know so much about probiotics, but we actually know jack shit about probiotics. I'm not even kidding. Our research is getting there. We're starting to understand more and more. But as far as the intricacies of what a specific strain does for a particular type of immune cell and what that could do for people with various conditions, we really don't know that much. So what is going to happen, all I can tell you with a great deal of certainty, is that this probiotic comes in your immune system sees that and then things happen. <laughs> That's the thing. So for example, if you have an autoimmune disease and you're taking probiotics to help manage your autoimmunity, if you want the joint pain of your rheumatoid arthritis to stop flaring up and stop causing you pain, the hope and what we're trying to do with probiotics is you're hoping that the probiotic will come in, meet your immune system and your immune system will take a chill pill and do less inflammatory stuff and that it will have a net anti-inflammatory effect. But the thing about it is that it's not like there's just one cell of the immune system. You've got gazillions of cells that are gonna interact with this probiotic. So does the probiotic have a profound effect on mast cells, on T cells? And if it's a T cell, what type of T cell? Is it Th17, Th1, Th2, Th3? You get the idea, there's a million different types of cells and signaling molecules that these immune cells use. And honest to God, we just don't know enough about this topic yet. This is why somebody with say rheumatoid arthritis might take one particular probiotic and it makes them feel great. And then another probiotic makes them feel like dirt because you're tinkering with this immune system. You're, you're pulling the threads of a spider web in ways that we cannot fathom to understand how it's connected yet. So you're just gonna take a probiotic and hope for the best. That is what I think happens 90 plus percent of the time is that the probiotic meets your immune system and then stuff gets weird. And that doesn't mean it's a bad probiotic. It just means it's not the one for you in that moment. And I say in that moment because as your immune system chills out, as your autoimmunity is treated, as your gut microbiome changes, as, as you get older, that might change. And the same probiotic that flared you up might actually be anti-inflammatory for you down the road. But if you take a probiotic and it doesn't have the effect you want, or if it makes you feel worse or more inflamed, then I would start to think about this mechanism and think that maybe it ticked off your immune system and we just don't have an understanding of why it did that yet or how it did that. You could think of it as like pulling a thread on a spider web. It's very, very complicated. And even the best researchers right now are just starting to understand how that happens and what cells it's influencing. And then what those cells do to influence the rest of your body. The next is going to be that that probiotic swimming down the rest of the way 
and for somebody who has small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. If you have some bacteria, depicted in green, that are living in the wrong part of your tube, that probiotic could come down, interact with these bacteria, and then make changes that you might, like, you might not like to see. Now, I don't think this is nearly as common as people think. The idea that people talk about is that you're just piling bacteria on top of bacteria. So it's almost like, you know, your bacteria line, your, your fill line was up to here, and then the probiotics fill you up to here. And that's not really what happens. And for that matter, when they do aspirates and they actually culture the makeup of the bugs that are in SIBO, and they try to suck out the juice and suck out the bacteria from the small intestine of people with SIBO, when they do that, very, very rarely is there a large amount of documented lactobacilli or bifidobacterium. And this does fly in the face of that very famous, very well-known research study about the probiotics causing brain fog and lactic acidosis. I'll link a, our, uh, my other videos to that down below. Let me know if you would like me to do an update video on D-lactic acidosis. I have now gained a lot more experience with that. I've read a lot more about that and I've learned a ton and I've actually worked with patients with D-lactic acidosis. So I can give you a lot more feedback and experience if that's something that you guys wanna learn about. Just comment in the links down below and let me know if you want an updated D-lactic acidosis, acidosis video. And I swear I'm gonna pronounce it right in that video. But this piling bacteria on top of bacteria and making SIBO worse for that reason, I don't think is the case more often than not. I think what is happening with those folks who have SIBO who take a probiotic and then they feel worse, I think it's really this happening. Because remember, SIBO is very pro-inflammatory. You're cooking up all sorts of inflammatory juices and cytokines and just crap floating around in your body. And that if you go and tinker with the immune system with a probiotic, you could wreak havoc on a system that's already very compromised. And that is something that I've seen with pe people with SIBO. It doesn't appear that it's really like stacking bacteria on top of bacteria. That's never been documented to happen. And for that matter, the research as it stands now shows that probiotics are favorable for SIBO and can help eradicate SIBO. So that is the SIBO piece of the story. And then finally, the I'll kind of like put that. The next, the next way that this is going to interact with your body and why you could have a flare up is that it's going to act with your microbiome. So for example, if you don't have SIBO, if the majority of your bugs live in the colon where they belong, that probiotic is going to get to your colon and interact with your microbiota. And that's what we want. That's the entire premise of why we take probiotics to begin with. What can happen though is for example, if a probiotic is known to interact with a certain type of bad bacteria or favor a good type of bacteria, that change of the architecture, that pulling of those threads of those spider, you know, the spider web threads can cause symptoms in the acute term, but it might be very, very good for you in the long term. So you might have a case where you take a probiotic for a day and it makes you feel like crap, but then as you take it for more than a day or two or three or four, it actually makes you feel better. So do give probiotics at least two days is usually what I tell people before you really cast a judgment on them. It's entirely possible that it is a die off reaction or it is a reaction with your microbiome. And I will put I'll put microbiome as the explanation there, but keep in mind a lot of that I think is mediated by a die-off reaction where the probiotic competes with a bad bacteria or a bad parasite or a pathogen or candida, and then killing that or inhibiting that makes some inflammation for you and exacerbates your symptoms in the acute short term. And those are really the three biggies that I see most often. And I really, like I said, I'm going to chalk up 90 plus percent of these reactions to the immune system and that we're tinkering with a system that we just do not understand yet. And to give you an example, there's a type of T cell that we literally, we like as a human species, we just found out about in the year 2009. 2009, guys, that's 10 years ago. We just learned about an immune cell. We had no idea it was there. And there's others that we discovered in the early 2000s and mid 2000s. We're literally discovering new types of immune cells and we think that we know what we're doing. It's, it's mind boggling. So really the only thing you can do because you live in 2020 like I do, you live in an era where we just don't have this information. Unless you can time travel 200 years in the future and you could read all of the microbiome and probiotic and immune research 
from 200 years of the future, the only thing you can do is try a probiotic and hope for the best. And keep in mind that the probiotic that's right for you is going to probably be different than the probiotic that helped your sister Sally or your cousin Ferdinand or whoever. Everybody needs different, different probiotics. And this is why too, like, as a clinician, I see other clinicians and other doctors who have their go-to products. Like they only use probiotics from one company or they only ever use this one product. And that's just rubbish. It's utter rubbish because no two humans are alike and no two immune systems and microbiomes are alike. So there's absolutely no way in hell, to be frank, that one probiotic is going to be the end all be all. And this, you know, I've seen this with the spore forming probiotics. I've seen this with particular brands. It's all rubbish. Just try a bunch, see what happens, report back, let me know how it goes. So executive summary, I would say that about 90 plus percent of the adverse reactions or side effects that we see from probiotics are actually because you are manipulating or changing the immune system. And that is a system that we just know very little about. And it's very unpredictable how a probiotic is going to interact with your immune system in your body. And that could be a net anti-inflammatory result or a net inflammatory result, depending on where your body is at and where your immune system is at. So A, I think that this is 90% plus of the cases where this happens. The SIBO hypothesis of like adding bacteria on top of bacteria and that contributing to SIBO, I think is pretty much rubbish. It might happen for very few and far between people, like the true cases of lactic acidosis, for example. But other than a, a select few people, I really don't think this happens all that much. I think that because SIBOers are almost always inflamed and their immune system is jacked up and their gut is leaky and in a terrible state, it's this immune dysregulation and this change in the inflammatory state of the body that perturbs the SIBO symptoms in people who have SIBO who then take a probiotic and feel like rubbish. But I think like the idea of stacking bacteria on top of bacteria really is not supported in the literature and I don't think it really happens very frequently at all. Maybe 1% of all people. And then finally, the probiotics are gonna interact with your microbiome, which is exactly what we hope it will do. And that's what we hope will happen too with the immune system. People take probiotics for gut health and immune health. That's the entire point. But we have also a wild, wild west with the microbiome. Did you know that 50% of the human microbiome is not even named? Let alone the ones that we have names for, a lot of them just don't have any human research on them. We only know about a very select few of our microbiome, of our members of our microbiome. So, you know, we're dropping a microbiome or we're dropping a microbe into the microbiome, hoping that it's going to alter it favorably. But really, we just don't know. Really, you just have to try some, see how your body, see how your immune system and your microbiome tolerates it. If you feel really acutely inflamed, maybe give it a day or two and then call it quits and chalk it up to, hey, that one wasn't for me. And you can speculate whether it's your microbiome or your immune system or whatever have you. But try some, see what happens, and just know that every person needs different probiotics and there's no one size fits all. Finally, if you watch this video, you're like, OMG, I don't know where to go from here. I'm so overwhelmed. I've got good news. I have two ways that I could help you beyond just YouTube videos, although I have plenty of those for you to look at later. But I've got links in the doobly doo below. I do offer appointments for people both in North Carolina and out of North Carolina. I don't know why I just started talking about that in recent months, but I do. We could do appointments via Zoom and phone, and I could potentially help you even if you don't live local to me. So you can check that out in the doobly doo below. Also, if you want to join the waitlist for my next enrollment of FODMAP Freedom in 90 Days, that is a course particularly geared towards the folks with SIBO and IBS, and particular the people who want to eat FODMAPs again. But keep in mind that this is going to be a SIBO and IBS crash course. We're going to cover all of the things that could make your microbiome and your gut function wonky. And we're going to cover probiotics and prebiotics, feeding the good resident bacteria versus taking probiotics and how to find one for you. We're going to talk about all of that in the FODMAP Freedom course. So keep that in mind. I would love to see you in the next enrollment for FODMAP Freedom. And I, uh, will, I'll see you in the next video, won't I? Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.